Good afternoon, friends. Um, today we're going to talk about how to read an ECG, which is probably uh, there is a saying or a notion that a doctor is incomplete uh, if he cannot um, understand reading EKGs. Um, before that, I would like to thank uh, for your support and uh, um, please do not forget to uh, subscribe to All and Unlaw. Um, we will continue to provide as much edu education that is um, possible. Thank you. Um, so going uh, to the basics of ECG reading, uh, I'll go over with some basic concepts and things that are absolutely needed that one should never forget to comment on an EKG or ECG period. Uh, let's look at a normal ECG waveform. I think important things are to remember standardization, which is usually a rectangular bar that you see every ECG. Normally this should be 10 millimeters, which indicates a standardization um, that is universally accepted. And also the speed, which is at the bottom, that is 25 millimeters per second. This is important because sometimes you have to interpret low voltage complexes versus high voltage complexes and uh, it can be helpful. Before going to reading ECG proper, I would like to just um, go through the waveforms in the ECG. So these were named by an empiric choice of letters. There was no specific um, um, long form of these letters. So they were just chosen um, by chance. P wave, the QRS waveform, the T wave, the intervals that is PR interval, QT interval and segment wise ST segment period. So P wave indicates atrial repolarization or depolarization. Apologies. Uh, PR interval indicates the conduction of impulse from the atrium to the AV node. The QRS waveform indicates the depolarization of the ventricle and the ST segment including T wave it, it demonstrates the ventricular repolarization as we all know. In terms of uh, reading an EKG, uh, I think first thing is obviously going through standardization. The next thing we should look at the rate. Rate can be assessed. There are various methods of uh, detecting the rate of ECG, but I'm going to tell you a very brief and easy way to tell the rate approximately. That is, if you count the number of big boxes between two QRS complexes, and you can really tell whether it is tachycardia or bradycardia. If there are th three or less big boxes, then it is tachycardia because the heart rate will be exactly above 100. If it is five or five big squares, then it is usually bradycardia because it indicates a heart rate of 60. It becomes a little bit tricky in uh, patients with irregular heart rate where you can just con count the number of complexes in a span of six seconds and multiply it by 10, which gives you rate per minute. Rhythm is the next important thing that you should look at. That is every P wave should be followed by a QRS complex that is indicate that indicates sinus rhythm and the regularity of it that is regular, irregular kind of stuff. Uh, next is I would usually get the P wave abnormality which can be best seen in either lead V1 or V2. Sorry, uh, or lead two, I mean. Um, and uh, you can detect either atrial abnormality in the form of right atrial enlargement or left atrial enlargement. And uh, right atrial enlargement usually is seen as a tall P wave of more than 2.5 small squares in lead two. Whereas left atrial enlargement can be described as a negative component of the P wave in V1, which is more than one millimeter or a notching of P wave in lead two. Then, PR interval, which uh, basically indicates the conduction from A3, SA, SA node to AV node. This is prolonged um, in first degree AV block and normal values up to 200 milliseconds. Anything above 200 milliseconds is considered as prolonged first degree AV block or atrioventricular block. Next is QS duration. Uh, you look at different things. I think access is something important. It is relevant. 
and it's a very complex way of assessing the axis. I'll not go into details, but you should look at the axis, right axis, left axis, or extreme axis. Then you should definitely, the most important thing I think every physician should know is the ST segment, elevation, depression. This has to be in reference to the TP segment that is starting from the end of the T wave and the beginning of the P wave because this is the only part of the ECG waveform which is electrically uh, silent or you can call does not indicate any electrical activity in simple terms. Um, and that is, as you know, is very vital for the diagnosis of ischemic heart disease. Then always um, never forget to calculate the QT interval because this is very clinically important because as you know, a prolonged QT interval indicates uh, uh, the risk of um, malignant arrhythmias and death. So it becomes very important and every medication uh, that we come across uh, has some to do, something to do with the QT interval and there is a big list um, of medication that can really interact and this is a cause of big or huge mortality. So in nutshell, my friend, when you read an EKG, look at the standardization and speed, then comment on the rate, followed by rhythm, regular, irregular, look at P wave, QRS complex, axis, Oh, apologies, I think in the QRS complex I did not go into details, but you can look at the duration of the QRS complex and the morphology of the QRS complex. And in that, anything above more than three small squares or 120 milliseconds QRS is called prolonged QRS duration. And we'll discuss about QRS in detail in my coming uh, uploads. Then uh, definitely never ever forget ST segments and QT interval. And remember, QT interval should be corrected for a heart rate. So the true value of QT is when it is corrected for the heart rate called QTC. This can be used, this can be found by formula QT interval divided by square root of the heart rate or RR interval, I mean. Thank you once again. Hope this helps. Any feedback is helpful. Have a good day.